today's video it's all about adding nickel to cast iron nickel can be a very expensive metal to buy so while I was reading through my favorite book metals and alloys I found a high nickel alloy that can be very easily found and I can add it to the cast iron this is the alloy I'm talking about here it's called MU metal it's a high permeability, low hysteresis alloy. Now we come along to the first ingredient, it's copper, 5%. Next there's iron, 13.8%. Then we come to the nickel content, it is 77.4% nickel, which is the majority alloying constituent in this metal. And then we come across to here, to miscellaneous, and we've got molybdenum, it is 3.8%. This is what the MU metal looks like and this is the target weight I'm going for today, 6,500 grams. So I need 1% nickel which is 65 grams. Now what happens is by trial and error I worked out that 84 grams and you find 77.4% you'll get 65 grams. But you've got other percentages as well. You've got iron, copper and molybdenum. So you work out all these percentages here and you've got the grams, how much they are. So I've worked out the overall percentage like the 1% and they come to 0 0.18, 0 0.07 and 0.05%. So they're not much to really worry about. They're very low percentages. There are two reasons why I want to add nickel to cast iron. The first reason is the pattern. It contains thick and thin sections and when you cast it in cast iron the thick sections tend to cool a lot slower and produce a coarser grain. So what the nickel does, it refines that grain and gives it just that little bit more strength. But the second reason is probably a little bit stranger. When I add 1% nickel to cast iron you can add one third of one percent less ferrosilicon so it becomes a good reason to add nickel to cast iron you can use less ferrosilicon but you can't completely replace the ferrosilicon so where do you get this MU metal well I came across it completely by accident this book was first printed in 1929 but the copy that I've got was printed in 1949 so I thought, is that alloy out of date? So what I did, I looked up Wikipedia. And sure enough, it's still used around. And this is what it's used for. Hard drives. So I'll dismantle the hard drive and show you exactly what pieces to use and what is MU metal in a hard drive. This is what we're after. That one there and the one underneath is MU metal. So we can lift the first one off. Oh, that is tight. It's because they've got the super bag that's on them. So there, that's the first half and that's the second half. But we can't use the super magnet. They call them rare earth magnets, I think. But yeah, this stuff here, you don't want to add to cast iron. It makes it really hard and brittle. The bottom half, that comes out quite easy. And there's the bottom half. Now I've got the MU metal out of the hard drive, all the rest of the stuff we can throw away. Now I'll show you a simple method of how to get the magnet off. Is you just bend these just a little bit and you put a screwdriver in between 
and there is the super magnet rare earth magnet and there it is now it's ready to add to cast iron and you can do exactly the same with the other side just bend it a little bit and the glue breaks and you just pry it off with a screwdriver the furnace is ready to go it's tempting to add the nickel alloy right now but because it is a high melting point alloy and they're very thin pieces so they dissolve quickly I will not put them in now but I will put them in at the very last minute because if I do put them in now they will burn up through oxidization there is the angle plate mould no vents, we'll see if it fills up and then we've got the smaller mould here there's no vents whatsoever we'll see if that fills up as well and that could be more difficult because it is the last dregs of what's left in the crucible Here is the aftermath of what I've spilt. Looked really spectacular all the fireworks, didn't it? The angle plate mould has shrunk a lot, but it's filled up. And this other small casting is filled up. This is the wedge test where I added nickel to cast iron. We'll see what it looks like. This is the wedge test. It's nice and grey all the way through, which is really good news because I'll be able to machine my castings. These are the ingots from where I added nickel to cast iron, and I'll break these ingots in half and we'll see what they look like. Yeah, have a look at these ingots. They're grey all the way through. It proves that you can use nickel in conjunction with ferrosilicon to soften cast iron. And it does increase the strength a little bit. Did you see where I was trying to break the big ingot? It took a lot of blows to break it in half.
this is the last casting I poured when I added nickel to the iron. We'll see if it filled up the mould. Yep, look at that. No vents. And it filled up the mould. No problem whatsoever. Well, we've got the angle plate casting on my moulding bench with most of the sand scraped off. And we can see some obvious faults here. But before I go and discuss that, have a look at here, and here, and here. It did fill up all the mould, but this alloy tends to shrink a fair bit. And you can see across here, it's got a depression right across this length. And also, for the sprue, it shrunk quite a lot so obviously I need to have quite a larger feeder on this to make this to work but the other thing is the next time I cast this I'm gonna to have to flip it around and pour it the opposite way having this sharp edge up the top is probably not the way to pour it there is one more thing I want to mention this part here is only cosmetic shrinkage defect as long as it's got the bracing on either side here it still is a usable casting but what I really want to know is what does this nickel cast iron machine like and that's what I'll do with this casting is machine it all over and see what it looks like 